Good morning, everyone. Uh, great to see you all uh, here this morning, and uh, particularly Roger. Welcome to you. I've got a few questions I want to, to ask Roger, and uh, as we go along, if there is a question or a follow-up question you'd like to ask, uh, please indicate, and I'll, I'll try and get to you as well. Do you have any evidence around where you think the skill shortages might be in the small business sector and how we might deal with it? Almost immediately post GFC, the skill shortage issue started registering again. Disappeared a bit, um, it ebbed away a bit, um, and here we are in an economic upturn, trying to get businesses to maximise the benefits of the upturn, and the first thing they're now saying is finding and keeping the best staff has now re-emerged as, uh, as an issue. Look, uh, if, if you look at where business is telling us the shortages are, if you look at where, where they're voting, they're going into the areas you'd expect. They're going into lean manufacturing, they're going into retail, they're going into accommodation and aged care, they're going into hospitality, um, you know, they're going into construction. So if you look at, across, uh, at all the placements we're making through that program, for example, they're the key areas, that's where they're going. They're not going to... Um, they're not going to the short courses, they're not going necessarily in large numbers to the certificate one courses, they're going to the two, threes and fours. In other words, you have businesses actually genuinely trying to achieve skills building and skills deepening in those areas. Uh, you know, Becky released its election uh, agenda uh, last week and one of the key elements of that was small business. Uh, I think we share your view that you know, there's 480,000 small businesses in Victoria. They're a major driver of our economy, have been in the past and are likely to be in the future if we can provide the right environment for them to develop and grow, to encourage more business start-ups, to encourage more sustainability of business, small business and good practice. I'd be interested in your thoughts, the amount of experience you've had in this sector and the advice that you might provide to, to the next government about what are the sorts of policies that perhaps that we can collaborate on mm. to ensure that we can grow uh, the success rate of small business. There was a Senate inquiry, a federal Senate inquiry recently, and so I'm just quoting their findings, I'm not expressing an opinion. Their finding was that small business lending had slowed uh, post GFC and that margins had widened. That, that was the finding of the, of the report. I certainly think uh, it's, it's a challenge both in terms of strengthening management skills, uh, positioning business owners better, vis-a-vis -vis getting bank finance and, uh, and other finance, non-bank finance. Uh, what we tried to do in the area of finance was simplify it, a heroic sort of thing to try to do. Um, if you go to the major banks, each of them will tell you, well, we have about 230 or 300 finance products. How do you expect us to, to, to present them in a simple way? So what we built was a business loan finder. It's based on a live feed from InfoChoice. So the data's current. And what it allows businesses to do is key in very quickly. It takes literally about two minutes to key in the amount you're looking for, um, the security, whether you're going to put your house up, whether you want fixed interest or variable interest, literally a couple of minutes search. And then the loan finder will give you the top five or six loans and finance products that correspond most closely to your needs across finance providers. It won't make recommendations, but it'll link, it, it'll list them in terms of minimum to maximum monthly repayments. My name's Bianca from Clean and Gone, and we've got a demolition company. Uh, I just wondered if you've got any suggestions on how we could um, maybe get some financial assistance or look at getting some grants uh, in the future, since um, you know tip fees and. Uh, EPA fees have you know, significantly increased this year. Sure. Um, have a look at uh, Finder Grants on business.vic.gov.au. There's a Finder Grants area there uh, and it'll take you through eligibility criteria. Typically, if you're doing something to innovate, typically if you're looking at business expansion, um, then you could qualify for one of those grants. And what they do is offset the, um, the, the consulting costs that you'll invariably incur in doing a strategic review or, um, you know, doing a growth plan. One of the things that we come across a lot is the, words, the use of the words green and eco. Uh, there's so many people out there using them that haven't got anything to back them up. You can look at trucks driving around, uh, businesses have got in their name. Is the government considering um, investing some time in 
uh, working out whether or not people should be using those claims or not. Are you suggesting in a regulatory sense or an accreditation sense? In all those ways. I mean, where uh, most of the people here take a genuine interest in providing some sort of service that's got a focus on sustainability or environmental uh, protection or whatever you want to call it. It would seem to us that there is some opportunity in that space, so it could be something we can develop further. It'd be a code or it'd be, yeah. Yeah, yeah be a code of practice type approach to it, and then we could market that as being looked for this as being something that does signify those that are genuine as opposed to those that are mm -hmm. you know, just trying to be opportunistic. Perhaps, uh, Roger, can we just leave with one final question? We are going to have a new government after 27th of November. Part of your role is to provide advice to that incoming government. What would be the principal thing you'd be talking to them about where we want to take growth and development of small business into the future? In terms of the next four years, um, an advice to the incoming government is the Victorian Small Business Commissioner um, that considers retail lease disputes. It's been ramping up every year. I don't think it's going to plateau even, I think it's going to continue to increase. Um, so we've also, we've also got to provide some advice on uh, how to make that service available. But that provides low cost dispute resolution, it keeps disputes out of the courts. If you have a retail lease dispute, you can't go straight to VCAT, you've got to go to the Small Business Commissioner and it's mediation. It's a $195 mediation fee and that's that. Um, and typically a lot of those disputes are small business to small business because a lot of them aren't the major landlords. Some of them, you know, they're, they're the, the smaller landlords in shopping strips. There's both. There, there's a mix. Um, so I think um, it's also incumbent on us to, um, to provide some advice into that area as to how it's serviced. I think uh, you've, you've answered a wide-ranging uh, set of questions there. We really appreciate your time. So on behalf of the audience, can I thank you and in the usual way, can you thank Roger for his time and effort today? Thank you.